Welcome. In this video, we are going to go through the sets of directional terms so that you can successfully use them throughout the year to describe where things are on the body and use them in comparison with each other. There are six pairs of directional terms. Each pair has opposites, so supine will be opposite to prone, superior opposite from inferior. We'll go through each of these terms individually, and then we'll practice them at the very end. Before we start using the directional terms, we need to know what our starting point is. Anatomical position is just a basic reference point of how the body is standing so that we are on the same page when we say things like the thumb is lateral to the palm. We know then that in anatomical position, the palm is facing forward and the thumbs are out to the side. So anatomical position, if asked, um, you're standing with your feet together, your arms are at your side, and the biggest thing is that your thumbs are pointing away from the body. The first pair of terms are ones that we won't use all too often. They are reference points for a laying down person. Okay, So the person would be laying down if you see supine or prone. And it's just describing um, if the person is laying on their back or their stomach. Supine is the correct directional term to use if the person is laying on their back. You can remember supine because you can eat soup while in supine position. All right, so this fella here has a bowl of soup on his chest and he is able to eat um, spoon-fed soup while in supine position. The opposite of supine is prone. Prone is mean that the person is on their stomach, their back is facing up. The next pair of terms um, refer to whether you're facing forward or facing back, looking at the front or looking at the back. Anterior is the term for looking at the front. Anterior is synonymous with ventral. In class, we will use anterior over ventral, um, but in case you do see it in different text, you know that ventral is the same as looking at the front. In anatomy, we'll do a lot of picking words apart and we'll look a lot at prefixes and suffixes. So in anterior, we see the prefix of ant. The prefix ante means before. The opposite of anterior is posterior, and if you're using ventral, the opposite would be dorsal. The prefix in posterior is post, and post is referring to after. And a way to remember that is sometimes people will talk about post-secondary education, what they're gonna do after high school. So anterior is front, and posterior is back. We can also use ventral and dorsal as instead of anterior and posterior, but don't crisscross the terms. If you're using anterior, you should use posterior as the opposite. You should not switch over to dorsal. Here's anterior and posterior from the side view. Anterior would be referring to the front of her body, posterior the back of the body. Superior is the directional term that means above or higher than. If you're referring to something that's higher than, um, it would be above. So you can just draw an arrow pointing towards the, the head of your torso diagram here. So an example would be something like the shoulder is superior to the belly button because it's higher up on the body than the belly button. The opposite of superior is inferior, so it means below or lower than. And to show something that's inferior, we would show an, a down arrow. This would be saying something like, let's say use the belly button again, the belly button is inferior to the nose. Okay, it's lower than the nose. The next pair of terms are going to refer to an imaginary line that goes down the center of the body and we'll refer to that as the midline. So in medial, that direction is referring to towards the midline. To show that something is medial, picture it as going towards the midline. So it has to be closer to the middle of the body in order for it to be medial. So an example might be the nose is medial to the ears. The opposite of medial is lateral. This refers to directions that are away from the midline. Arrows to show something that's lateral would be going away from the midline. An example of this would be, would be that the wrists are lateral to the belly button. They are farther away from the midline. The next pair of terms are similar to superior and inferior, but there is a 
point here that you have to remember that proximal and distal can only be used to reference locations that are on the limb. The directional term proximal refers to something that is closer to the attached base. The attached base is the torso. Since terms that are already on the torso cannot be closer or farther on the attached base, the term proximal and distal can only be used on the limbs. So a proximal uh, directional term would refer to something that is closer to the attached base, so think of it as closest to the shoulder or closer to the hip. An example here would be that the elbow is proximal to the wrist or the knee is proximal to the calf because both of these points are higher or closer to the, the attached base than the others. Next we have the opposite of proximal which is distal. I put our friendly reminder here that distal can only be used on the limbs and it's opposite so it's going to mean farther from the attached base. When we're referring to points that are distal we'll look for things that are closer to the fingertips and closer to the toes since these are points that are away from the attached base. Examples that we could give would be that the palm is distal to the shoulder. The toes are distal to the thigh. So proximal and distal only referencing points that are on the limbs. Alright, the last two terms are also terms that are not quite so commonly used. Um, we'll use them more often second semester when we start talking about muscles. They are superficial and deep. Superficial is the term that refers to closer to the surface. So if I were to use an example, I might say that the muscles are superficial to the bones because the muscles lay on top of the bones, therefore they're closer to the surface, which would be the skin. Sometimes you may have seen like superficial burn or a superficial cut, meaning that it's, it's on the top layer, it's towards the surface. The opposite of superficial is deep, meaning that it's farther within. And an example there would be that the heart is deep to the rib cage. It's further within the body, farther away from the surface um, than the, the rib cage would be. Let's go ahead and do a quick review before we call it quits. On the diagram on your sheet, you have a blank torso, you have a midline down the center of the body, arrows pointing away from it. Those arrows, since it's away from the midline, that would refer to lateral. Both arrows are pointing away, so both of these would be lateral for their labels. You have two sets of arrows that seem to have a top point and a bottom point. On the right hand side, this arrow goes for the entire body whereas this one is specific to the arm. The arm is a limb, so I know that this, set of, this arrow is going to be referring to proximal and distal because those are the terms that I can only use on the limbs. The arrow that is pointing towards the attached base is proximal, and I can do the next arrow two ways. I can use process of elimination or, or my matching, and I know that distal is the opposite of proximal, and that makes sense because distal is pointing to away from the attached base. The other arrow is going to be um, superior and inferior since it's above or below. Superior is above and inferior is below. The diagram is missing an arrow and that would be the arrow that's pointing towards the midline. So the arrow that points towards the midline, that would be our opposite of lateral and it's medial, it's going towards the midline. I'm not going to worry about superficial and deep, that's tricky to show in terms of arrows. I'm also not going to worry about supine and prone since the person is standing. So the last two terms that we would have to think about would be anterior and posterior. I would assume that since I can see the definition of a chest here, abs and a chin, that we're looking at the anterior side, the front of the body. All right, and then that means posterior is not visible. So those are the directional terms. Get used to using them. They will carry with us throughout the course of the year. Keep practicing.